struggle of being a youth trans kid. Statistically, this is how many people in our school are members of the LGBTI community. That's 10% of people in this room. It's a big part of you, your gender. Like, everybody knows their gender. But when you start questioning, it gets harder and you start to mature a lot more and you're like, okay, so this is actually me now. You're starting the self-discovery process. Yeah, the discrimination that young LGBTI people face ranges from all the way to high risks of hate crimes and violent attacks to microaggressions like being misgendered, that's having someone refuse to use the right pronouns or the right name or the right gender identity labels. And so by using the wrong pronoun to address a person, meaning that you're not being um, recognised as who you are by others. Surgery and the early in infant surgery is a big issue. Uh, and I think there's sort of growing consensus that the age of 12 is, is a good age. So there's a lot more work that needs to be done with parents to say you don't need to choose a binary gender and it's best to wait for that young person to, uh, to reach the age of 12 and then have whatever surgery if they want, if they choose to have surgery. It's being forced to wear the wrong uniform at school because you don't conform to the cisgender expectation and the narrow gender identity is of male and female. Fears about resistance that they think maybe people aren't going to respond very well, parents aren't going to like what's happening in the school, but a lot of those fears um, don't come true. In fact, people respond really positively and that's amazing and I think you know, the Victorian community has a lot to be proud of. It's having identity documents where you've been allowed to update your gender on one of them but not the other and having to explain every single time exactly why you've got these different labels. People are terrified of anything that is not them. So you see parents trying to mirror their character into their children, which is quite, it's quite a deadly flaw in society because, you know, children should be able to write their own stories in a way. When I was 20, there was no internet, there was no information. My sister went to Melbourne University to work mid-80s. There were no books in the Melbourne University Library on transgender. So now there's the internet, now there are support groups openly out there, and I can walk around the street. The main objective of a queer space is for it to be a safe space, as in like they're absolutely, to the best of our ability, there'd be no prejudice or like you would not be persecuted or questioned because of your um, sex, gender or sexual orientation. The Stand Out group started um, three years ago, um, just through a group of students that I was, speaking, I was speaking to around social justice after I went to the Safe Schools Coalition Professional Development. So Safe Schools Coalition was set up to um, support sexual diversity and gender diversity in schools um, and intersex people and the program launched in 2010 with the funding of the Department of Education. And we basically offer schools um, training for staff, we offer resources, we offer um, consultancy, individual support for students, particularly transgender and gender diverse students to affirm their gender identity. We support schools to improve their school policy um, and we help students to establish student-led groups to um, stand up uh, for same-sex attracted, gender diverse and intersex students' rights and also to challenge homophobia and transphobia at school. Why Gender is a transgender and gender diverse youth organisation, so we work on support and advocacy. The support section is where we run two or three events a month for transgender and gender diverse young people. Those can be activity nights, discussion nights, or just general introduction to Why Gender events, where people can express themselves as honestly and authentically as they're they are comfortable with and know that they won't be judged or harassed for just being them. Um, we also do a lot of advocacy work by working with other organisations such as Minus 18, Transgender Victoria, the Zoe Bell Gender Centre and other organisations to um, work together to advocate for um, trans and gender diverse rights. Minus 18 is an organisation for LGBTIQ youth based in 
from Melbourne, Melbourne, like in the city somewhere, and um, they do a lot of work with with youth to kind of create relationships within the community to make them feel safe and included in everything that they do, everything that they do outside of Minus 18, like included in the community as a whole. <laughs> I was watching our senior football boys play a game just after our Idaho assembly from last year and one of the boys from the other school called one of our boys gay and there ended up being a bit of a scuffle and one of our very manly boys said, doesn't that school know it's not appropriate to use that language on the sporting field? It was just one of those great moments. I first kind of came to grips with it about a year and a half ago um, as being a lesbian at the time. And so I thought that it wasn't going to be pretty good. So I, I tried to kind of hide it for a bit. I remember coming out to my mum, who I'm a lot scared of around her, to telling her things like this. So I was at dinner with her one night and my stepdad, and she was kind of bagging the LGBT community. So she was talking and I'm like, stop you're offending people, <laughs> this is a bad thing to say. She's like, why should, you don't know, you're not one, and I'm like, well actually, I am, so stop. And it got her really off surprise, and after a while she was fine with it, and it was good, and since then I've decided that I am, I identify as non-binary, which is, I'm neither, I'm kind of not a girl or a boy, but I'm kind of in the middle. And the school don't really realise that, but we've had students in tears saying that the day that the principal sent the letter home that said you could bring a partner to the same to the form of the same sex or the opposite sex or whoever you wanted of any gender, um, they suddenly felt like somebody had seen them for the first time. So people shouldn't underestimate the power of, of small changes to impact people's lives. Well certainly young people coming into my office saying, you know, we've got all these issues we need to get together. Was a, was a big motivator. Uh, I can remember running some of the first sessions and I think one of the most powerful sessions we did was we actually had a minister of the Home Church come and apologise to the young people about some of the, the things and atrocities that churches had done to homosexual people and there wasn't a dry eye, whether the young people were religious or not. But we certainly had, you know, um, Orthodox Catholics or people, young people there who had become homeless, whose Grandmother had chased them around the kitchen with holy water and tried to do exorcisms and the whole thing. So this was a very, very powerful session uh, that we ran and, and a very healing session for those young people as well. Make sure that, they're, that you're safe when you are coming out and you know that you're going to be safe afterwards. I really think that like life is hard and the way, the way you go through is like you soldier on until you find a way to survive because you know being you already have the tools and all you need to do is keep fighting until you have to be so much better than everyone else. LGBTI young people in Victoria are really just some of the most amazing people I've ever met and um, doing really amazing work themselves and I think the more that we can encourage and support and give those young people a voice um, and empower them to create the kind of societies that they want to live in then that's a benefit to the whole community. That's not just for those young people, it's for all of us. I think we should all accept everybody. Trans is no different to anyone else. There's been a bit of confusion in the wiring somewhere along the line. Just be who you are and be different, it's fine. Being different has never been a problem. If someone has a problem with you being different, they're a bad part of your life that you should terminate immediately. One of the most important things to remember is Whilst you're probably one of the experts in the services you're providing, whatever kind that may be, medical, youth work, schools, anything, the young person you're dealing with is the expert in themselves and their identity. And it's really important that you are open to learning from them because they almost certainly know more about who they are than you do. It can be as simple as a farewell afternoon tea on a Friday afternoon and a welcome afternoon tea uh, for the new gendered person on the Monday morning. It says that we understand that you've had a big transition in your life and we want to celebrate that with you. Uh, 
and it can be much more powerful. You know, some organisations say, oh, we'll just ignore it. We'll ignore it and that will be the best response. And obviously, you know, it's not always. It's about talking to the transgender or gender diverse person saying, what would you like? Would you like us to ignore it? Would you like us to celebrate it? What would you like us to do? And, and being open to doing that. Jesus calls us to love. That's it. Not judge, just to love. And we have to love everybody that comes into our school community and provide them with the safest and most supportive environment we possibly can. Be yourself, no matter what people say. Be yourself and be true to yourself and it'll make you a lot happier in the long run.